And we're live. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, we had a, around a week with no live streams. I just got back to Israel a few days ago, so I've been dealing with travels, getting over jet lag. Uh, but we're here. We're here, and we're going to be streaming steady for the next uh, few weeks. Uh, I'm excited for today's conversation with Emmanuel Shahaf. Uh, I'll introduce him in a moment, but just before we get started, a, a quick shout out to our visionary Patreon member, Renee Gordon. Um, and for anyone who really wants to support the show, you know, we did take a little break the past uh, year and a half as I've been building uh, my c community and company Grateful Giraffes, but we, we are back in full force. Um, so if you want to support the show, you could find ways to do that either through Patreon or become a member here on YouTube. Uh, or if you want to contribute in non-monetary ways, you could always reach out to me and we could have a conversation. You'll see all of that in the description of this video. Um, today, we have Emmanuel Shahaf with us. He is one of the architects of the Federation solution. Uh, and, you know, now more than ever, we need to start talking about solutions uh, because we see what the status quo produces, more and more violence. And if I'm to generalize a, a bit, it seems like people who are distant from the conflict, people around the world, they talk traditionally, it's been the two-state solution. I feel like in recent years, the one-state solution has been gaining in popularity. But if you talk to people living on the land, they actually aren't adamant about either because they don't they don't really see how either works in practice. So it's it's almost like the, the more you understand about the Israel-Palestine conflict, the less hope you have in either of those solutions, which is quite interesting. Um, so Emmanuel is going to present a, a different solution, a new paradigm, a federation. Uh, and this, you know, I, I consider myself to be not quite solution agnostic. You know, I, I wouldn't support any solution, but I'm not ideologically driven by one solution over another. For me, it's very pragmatic. What solution is most likely to work? What can we implement? What will lead to a uh, a better future for the inhabitants of the land. And when I look at all the different solutions, the Federation really speaks to me as probably the most viable. So uh, I'm definitely a supporter of the Federation solution. Uh, and with that, Emmanuel, take it away. Uh, let us know about this plan and how we can make it work. Hello, everybody. Good to be with you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, a small correction: the Federation actually is not not so new. It's pretty old. It's pretty old. It actually was the runner-up to the partition resolution in uh, 1947 uh, was the second, uh, came in second uh, by, by the uh, UN Palestine Committee uh, when they were selecting the solution. So a federation was the second one. And actually uh, Zionists uh, among them, Jabotinsky and uh, uh, a few others, including Ben Gurion were considering a federal solution uh, for for Palestine and Eretz Israel, uh, when it wasn't clear whether they would it would be possible to have a Jewish majority state, uh, so it's been been discussed before, and it's time to bring it back into the into the discussion, mainly because the two state solution apparently is not going to come uh, anytime soon, uh, even though now in, in the wake of the Gaza war there are attempts to revive it, and Biden just mentioned it uh, fleetingly, so to speak, that he still wants a two-state solution, and some European countries also do, but uh, uh, actually, as a result of what happened in Gaza, it's even more likely that the Israeli Republic will uh, will agree to a second, to a Palestinian state next to us uh, after what happened with Gaza. Uh, uh, so, uh, again, the, the likelihood of two states becoming real is, is, is pretty much remote. Uh, and even if, if it wasn't remote, uh, it wouldn't be a good solution. We think that uh, the two-state solution, first of all, uh, both peoples don't find much favor with the two-state solution. They don't like the fact that they won't have access to the other, to the other state. Uh, and uh, economically, it's a disaster for the Palestinians uh, who uh, are basically dependent on Israel's economy and any kind of border which would be created would cause them tremendous damage. Uh, as a result, it would also be bad for the security of Israel because the moment the Palestinian economy isn't running well, uh, that uh, the people there will be will be open to bribery and uh, getting involved in security-related issues, which isn't good. And there's another issue which is usually is Israeli discussed, 
but it, it concerns the uh, Israel's relations with, with the Arabs, with the Israeli Arabs. Uh, right now, Israeli Arabs, by, by and large, are a very loyal population. Uh, and they only have one, one country, whether they like it or not, but they have Israel. Okay? And many of them are, are good citizens and happy citizens. Uh, the moment you create a Palestinian state, there's, a, there's an option for them to look the other way, to look, look towards Palestine. And there's another problem that that if if things don't work out too well, that uh, Israel will, will want to uh, throw them out towards that Palestinian state in another Nakba. So creating a Palestinian state would would would, would not be a good solution uh, under any circumstances. If it if it if it, at all it would be possible to to implement. It. So what do we want in a uh, what do we want in a solution? Uh, we, first of all, we, we, need, we need a solution that is politically acceptable. And when I mean politically acceptable, I, I don't mean that it passes with the 61 to 59 majority in the Knesset, that it has support on both on the left and on the right. Uh, from, from experience, uh, from uh, the Oslo agreements came through very, with a very small majority, and uh, um, uh, that's not good. So it has to be politically acceptable. Uh, it should be agreeable to the Palestinians. Uh, although I say that uh, it could conceivably be implementable unilaterally, uh, because uh, if the Palestinians won't agree to it, uh, and, and there's a chance because Palestinians are uh, unlikely to break, break ranks. Okay, so as long as the Palestinian leadership has not agreed to something, nobody will step forward and say, oh, that sounds actually quite reasonable. So we should be, we should be in a position to implement it unilaterally uh, with it being understood that there would be no major resistance on the side of the Palestinians because it's something positive. Um, there, uh, uh, it would give uh, it would give the Palestinians political and economic benef econo economical benefits right away. Uh, today, the Palestinians are very disadvantaged. Politically, they are disadvantaged, obviously, but economically uh, as well. Their their GDP is about one tenth of the, uh, even less than one tenth of Israel's GDP. We have a GDP of around fifty thousand uh, dollars per per capita per year. Uh, and they have one around 3,000, 4,000 in the West Bank, and in Gaza it's even less. Uh, so that's 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 a that's a, a difference which is not uh, sustainable uh, and has to be uh, overcome in the framework of any solution. It should be uh, well received by the world powers. Okay, they should have uh, they should be able to see the, fut the future, a reasonable future in it, and international organizations as well should also be uh, accepted by neighboring countries, so by Jordan uh, in particular and Egypt, and also the, uh, the, the Gulf countries. Uh, it sh uh, should it keep Israel secure. That's a pretty basic requirement, especially after what happened. So we, we feel even more threatened by uh, our surroundings. It should be flexible, okay, and we, meaning that it should be able to deal with changes uh, uh, coming along, uh, it should be either, it should be s simple to withdraw from it, meaning that if it, it, we won't be able to go through and going back, there is not, no major ha harm is done, and it should also obviously adhere to international law, except maybe for a period of trans transient period or something like that. So that's a pretty pretty big, uh, uh, you know, it's it's a it, it, Pretty uh, a lot of requirements, but actually we, we think that the federation we're proposing will actually be able to meet it. So what we're pro proposing is, is a federation, a federal system which is uh, similar in, in the basic con construct to to about thirty other federations all over the world. Uh, Forty percent of the world population lives in federation uh, among among the most most successful countries: the United States, Brazil, Germany, Austria, Australia. Our federations, and so there's a lot, uh, a lot of places where you can look at what they have and decide what what we want. Uh, and there's also things to say what, what we don't want. So there's a lot of samples. Uh, so we're proposing to split Israel uh, between 
between the Jordan River and the sea, not including the Gaza Strip, and I'll tell you later why. Uh, actually, now I think pretty much everybody knows, but uh, even before, uh, into 30 cantons, okay, the area uh, of Eretz Israel, of Palestine, into, uh, split into 30 cantons, 20 of them Jewish majority, uh, 10 of them Palestinian majority, that uh, ratio with 20 to 10 or 2 to 1 would represent basically the, the demography uh, in the area between the Jordan River and the sea, not including Gaza, uh, the, it would be about 65% Jewish, 35% Palestinian, non-Jewish. So that would also be expressed in the ratio of the, uh, of the uh, cantons. There would be a, a joint constitution, uh, that, a joint constitution meaning a, a, a federal constitution, liberal federal constitution we would write together with the Palestinians. Israel was supposed to uh, write a constitution uh, when, the, when the state was founded uh, in, in the Declaration of Independence. It says specifically that we should have written the constitution already quite many, many years ago. We, we never came around to it. A constitution with the Palestinians would probably be an easier task than writing one for Jews only, uh, because the, the tasks are much more clear. It's, it's much more simple to defend one, one side against the other or protect one side against the other, from the other. Uh, so it wouldn't be such a difficult task. There are lots of co uh, constitutions to copy from. Uh, part of the uh, change in the, in, uh, the governmental system, there would be a second house in the, in the Knesset, an upper house, which would represent the cantons. Each canton would, similar to the United States Senate, would have two uh, representatives and send them to the Knesset. So there would be uh, 60 uh, upper house members in addition to the 120 uh, uh, lower house, uh, which would be a, a safety uh, a safety system which would prevent uh, a change to the to the system of government uh, when the demography changes i think the most the biggest concern for jews uh, in in any kind of arrangement is that uh, arabs may gain majority uh, okay and, and 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 therefore the power in in a democratic democratic country and we're obviously, obviously talking about a little liberal democracy uh, if i didn't mention it before uh, so, uh, uh, with uh, with two houses and, and a double majority clause, which would mean that in order to make changes to the governmental system or to the constitution, you need a majority both in the lower house, which reflects the demography, and in the upper house, which reflects the cantons, uh, uh, that would mean in order to change the power from Jewish power to Jewish majority power to the Palestinian majority, the Palestinians would have to have the majority of the population. They have to have to vote for one party, and they would have to change the majority status of six cantons from Jewish majority to Palestinian majority. Now, that technically that would be possible because everybody can move anywhere in in, in, the, in the country, but that's not going to happen. So, so we're, we're pretty safe on that account. Uh, the state would be a civil state. It would not, would, would uh, the nationality would be Israeli. Uh, everybody would have would keep his ethnic, religious, uh, uh, nationality, uh, and in addition, he would get uh, Israeli nationality, which would be also citizenship at the same time. And then there, we would unite citizenship and nationality, as opposed to what the situation is like now. Uh, we would maintain the Israeli flag and the symbols of Israel, uh, and. Uh, uh, we would run a federation in that way, uh, with uh, uh, the IDF being a federal uh, army and local security forces in uh, in the cantons. Uh, implement in implementation would be gradual, uh, probably uh, approximately. Uh, or, or the, the best way I can think about it is maybe three cantons at a time. Two, two Jewish majority and one Palestinian majority, uh, and, and it, it would go over quite a long period. When I, I gave a, a presentation to a Swiss audience, uh, they asked me at the, at the end of the presentation how long I think it would take until this whole thing goes over, and I, and I, you know, I said, well, 10 years or so. 
So they laughed at me and said it's going to take about 50 years. Okay, so so I, I think they have some experience with uh, with the federal system, uh, and it's actually not a not necessarily a bad thing that it would take a long time. Uh, and looking at the situation, the way it's developing now, it appears that the longer longer is is maybe even better, uh, as long as everybody understands that something uh, good is happening at the end. Uh, the refugee issue would be addressed uh, in in uh, multiple multiple ways. Uh, all the ones which are being considered now in the two state solution. Okay, the restitution. Uh, some refugees are allowed to return to Israel, uh, and uh, others into into third countries. But the the concept uh, we're proposing is a long term uh, to to normalize immigration procedures, meaning. Uh, long term, anybody who has roots in in the area can apply for uh, for citizenship or for immigration, and uh, it would be initially it would be regulated along uh, quotas, the quotas uh, with the aim of the quotas to maintain the demographic the demographic status more or less. Uh, in actual fact, it, it, uh, the, the quotas would never limit anybody from immigrating because. Uh, the way uh, we look at it, it's just it's just important to make it possible. Uh, in in actual fact, uh, not so many people are going to immigrate as everybody is afraid of or, or hopes for, depending on where you are. So that's uh, the general concept. The uh, the support we have some support, uh, more support on the center left, uh, on the right. Uh, we don't have any support among the population. Uh, among the, the leadership of the right, there, there is some support. Uh, some former Knesset members are supportive, and some of the in the municipal, municipalities in the West Bank are supportive. On the left and left center, uh, the population is generally supportive in in, in significant numbers. Uh, 20, 50, 20, 25 percent of, of uh, those in, on the left wing are would be supportive such a such a uh, such a plan. But we haven't basically we haven't done anything substantial in order to advance it. So we didn't have ma major campaigns. So uh, based on what we think, it, it should be possible to convince a lot of people. Although what has happened now in Gaza has obviously uh, changed changed many of the premises, and we have to see what uh, how the outcome where where it will lead us. Okay, that's that's about the the baseline. Ready for questions? Awesome. So you heard it here: not a one-state solution, not a two-state solution, but a thirty-state solution. Um, in a way. In a way, yeah. Th thanks for that breakdown. So I do see some people asking uh, why. What about Gaza and why not include them? Okay, um, Gaza, uh, that's a population of 2.2 million uh, people and it would upset the demographic uh, ratio and uh, it would mean that uh, the population uh, balance would be about 50-50. Now, uh, what, I, what I said in the beginning is that we need political, it has to be politically acceptable. In Israel, you wouldn't get political acceptability for 50-50 uh, uh, demography demographic uh, balance. Okay, you, you have to assure a, a Jewish majority, uh, and even the two-thirds, one-third majority, which is as safe as can be, uh, won't be easy to to get across. But uh, to include Gaza at this stage would, would not be possible. But Gaza, first of all. Gaza isn't is isn't left out of the concept. It's left out of the political solution. It has to be provided with a port, an airport, and border uh, passage to uh, to to Israel and to the West Bank, and uh, all the support it needs to be able to uh, to establish itself as a as an independent entity, a Palestinian state, or or, or whatever they want to choose to to do there uh, without arms. Uh, and actually, this is this, it appears that that's that's what's going to happen this, now as as a result of the Gaza war. In the end, that, uh, something along these lines. Okay, uh, on, in the long run, obviously Gaza can can either be added on uh, as part of the federation if everything goes really, really, really well and smooth, or uh, it could be part of a uh, it could 
join uh, in a confederation with with uh, Israel. Uh, so, uh, in order to alleviate the fears of Jews to be uh, become a minority in, in its political system. So, uh, so that's that, that's about, about Gaza. Thank you. Um, and you mentioned the the military, the idea of being a part of the federal branch. Let, let's talk more about what that what that looks like. So currently we have mandatory um, mandatory military service for Israelis. Mm -hmm. Will Palestinians it, have it, the it ability to serve in the military? Yeah, it, it's interesting that this is a concern of many people. Although it's really it's really if you look into it, it's a technical issue. Okay, there's enough people. There's enough recruits for the army. Uh, that's not a problem. The, the army will have the first choice. Whoever doesn't want to serve in the army can either serve in an equivalent national service or you can serve in the local security uh, services in the in the cantons okay each, each of the cantons will have its own uh, police and security establishment uh, and uh, whoever doesn't feel comfortable serving in the, in, the, in the Israeli army which would be majority Jewish can uh, serve in, in, in his, his or her canton uh, there would be national service for everybody, and it would be split up according to what people want, and there would be financial encouragements. But uh, in the long run, uh, I, I don't think it'll be an issue. Uh, I, I don't know what people know, but in the, in the 50s, the IDF uh, was was uh, actually was recruiting. Uh, Arabs from the Arab population that was not doing service now, and what happened was that so many Arabs turned up for service that they, in the end, were they got scared, and they they cancelled the program. Okay, so uh, this is an issue which is is obviously of concern, but it's not a real problem. It's a technical issue and can be dealt with. Cool. Um, you mentioned the symbolism of state, the flag, national mm -hmm. anthem name of the state I, I i feel like you know you you created a solution that has viability amongst the israeli population and i think that's essential i think the symbolism might be an area of great resistance from the palestinian side because right now they view the flag it, it, they view it as the flag of an enemy. Like they even have sure. a visceral reaction to it. It's it's not even something it's, rational, but it's it's the flag of the enemy. Now it's, it's I, an issue. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, I don't I don't think I don't see Israelis giving up on the flag. But I wonder if you have the the federation is called the Federation of Israel and Palestine, and there's a Palestinian flag, an Israeli flag, and then there's a Federation flag. Is that something you've considered? Because I feel that like that would make this whole solution more palatable for for both people. First of all, let me be clear: this is not an Israeli-Palestinian solution; it's an Israeli solution. Okay, uh, we talk to Palestinians all the time, uh, so we 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 know what their, what their thoughts are. Okay, but, but uh, the way the situation is, the more Palestinians I have visibly on board, the the more problems I have with the Israeli side. Okay, so. The the uh, the real the correct name for the for the federation would be the Fed, the Federal Republic of Israel and Palestine. Okay, that would be the fair and correct name, and that's what it should be named. But this name wouldn't wouldn't get it wouldn't get us anywhere in in, in the political realm. Okay, so the way I, stru I uh, we structure it now for the time being is similar to the European uh, states, which have become uh, states of all their citizens. They maintain the original flag of their original nationality, but they have become a, 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 a nations of uh, of all citizens, uh, and the majority with the majority uh, giving their national symbol. Okay, so uh, so that that's for starters. First of all, uh, the Palestinians can fly their flag in the cantons. Okay. Uh, I, I again, I, I personally completely agree with you that that would be the ideal solution, something like that. Their flag, our flag, and the federation flag. Uh, but but this is something which which I think is politically at this time not acceptable, uh, and I'm 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 not sure that after the what happened in Gaza, the situation is even getting worse. Okay, so I'm uh, working a fine line here. 
uh, I think uh, I think uh, I've discussed this with uh, uh, with some uh, uh, Arabs, uh, Israeli Arabs of significance, and uh, uh, in the end they said uh, that uh, you know if if we, if they have equal citizenship, uh, the, the the flag won't be the issue. Okay, there. So uh, I I don't know to what extent that is true, but. Uh, but I have to give some credence to them because they're people of significance in the polit political realm. Uh, so this is something uh, I, I obviously there's also I, I don't see an, an issue to to write another part for for Hatikva, which would be inclusive of uh, of, uh, of the other populations and not only solely for Jews. Uh, so there's a lot of room for for being generous there. Uh, and uh, I hope it, it develops as part of the acceptance of, of, of this uh, federal program. That's, that's what you call work in progress. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, you really shed light on a challenge that finding a solution that's politically viable for both sides is seems like an impossible task. Um, Remember, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. It doesn't necessarily have to be viable politically for the other side. The the federation. This is what I meant by unilateral uh, implementation. That up to a certain point, it can be unilateral, and in the end, they have to vote on it. The Palestinians have to vote on it. Okay, and and if we do it right, if we we are generous and we do it in a smart way, they're going to vote on it because they're not going to go back to a, a occupation. Okay, they, if 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 they have the option to get ci full citizenship, and you give them a, in their in their in their canton, you let them vote on it, they're going to vote for it. Okay, I, I, there's enough evidence for that. Okay, but I, I agree with it. There's a challenge all the time, and, and it's a risk. But I think it's a risk that can be taken if we play it right. And and do you see there being a between each canton, like a, a border with checkpoints, or will it be all open? Only for uh, uh, for a transient period. The, 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 the country is supposed to be completely a normal country with the borders between the cantons only being administrative borders, and anybody can move from any canton to any canton. Uh, there may be, again, for a transient period, there may be a limitation or something like that. but. Uh, the uh, there's there's nothing uh, should there should be nothing preventing that. Cool. Um, we have Ellie Carton asking uh, what you think of the idea that the federal layer being on top of a two-state paradigm, a state of Palestine and a state of Israel, and a fed, federal layer for security, borders, economy, etc. That would be a confederation. It wouldn't be a federal. It wouldn't be a federal federal. It would be a confederation. The problem with the confederation is that uh, um, Israel won't agree to another sovereignty. Okay, uh, I, I if uh, that, that's the whole the whole problem. A two states two state solution and the confeder confederation is pretty much the same. Okay, we, first of all, we have to have two states for that, for both of, the, of those options. And we won't have this, the Palestinian state because we won't agree on the borders, we won't, we won't agree on the sovereignty. It may be possible, the, the positive thing about the federation is that if the federation, is, let's say the federation withers and they, we want to split it into states, that's possible along the can, cantonal lines if we then agree, if we then after having lived together for for some some years in, in peace, uh, uh, it, it, it should be possible to to split into into two states. I don't think it'll happen, but uh, that's conceivable. But to start with the confederation is just it's just not it's just not going to happen. I, I think. Um, Mazdak Zada is asking uh, asking you if you mean local identity as in. Catalan within Spain or Spain within EU, or is that does that distinction even matter? No, I think I, I think people self-define. Okay, and, and anybody in uh, any citizen in, uh, of Israel can define himself as a Jew or the, or the Palestinian or the Sudani who got stuck here, and and he he has he has citizen, Israeli citizenship in addition. 
and nothing is being impo imposed on him. It's, a, it's an option. He can also live as a resident if he wants to, but then he doesn't have the right to vote for parliament. Okay. So it's, it's going to be a, 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 a setup like in, in the advanced European democracies, where, where, where the nationality and, and citizenship are one and the same, and then you are part of the Israeli nation because you live in the area that is under Israeli sovereignty. In addition, you happen to be a Palestinian or, or whatever else you are. Okay. So that, that's that's the way I see it. In the federal system, there are a lot of options to additional options there. You can, in the cantons, they can give certain freedoms there that it's not a part of the federation within the restrictions of the of the federal constitution. But uh, but the system is is pretty is pretty clear. Dan in Israel is asking: Will there be an official language? Uh, first of all, I think it should be bilingual. It should be Arab, uh, Arabic and, and uh, Hebrew should be the, the two languages which are uh, of both official languages for, this, for the country. That's, that makes sense. And uh, that, would, uh, that should be uh, one of the few things which the federal uh, education uh, system should uh, should promote it's a bilingual and, and some basic civil, civics courses. Everything everything else uh, regarding education would be run by the cantons, uh, depending on the population that is uh, the majority in the canton. But uh, a, a bilingual uh, teaching Hebrew and uh, Arabic should be part of the whole of the federal school system. Great. Um, Jay Wilhelm asks, don't Palestinians have to elect someone that isn't totally anti-Semitic and doesn't hate Israel first? Otherwise, who do you negotiate with? So, you know, you've already explained that this would be a uni unilateral move, so it's it doesn't need to be negotiated with anybody. It just it, needs it, to be it, I, I, I'm not in favor of a unilateral move. I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, we just should go. go. I just say, I just think that it may not we may not have an alternative. OK, because P Palestine, again, the, the, when I discuss this with Palestinians, many Palestinians are in favor, but they are in not, not in a position to step forward and say, what about a federation? They, are, they, they don't want to do that. They don't want to break ranks. Okay, So uh, I don't know to what extent that, that we will remain their position. But if we have a situation where the Palestinians will stick to their, you know, stick across the board to their two-state dream, uh, uh, and, and we, in the meantime, create a quasi-federation, uh, which actually for the Palestinians is not so difficult because they have some of the prerequisites like the, like the, the regional government, they have that already in their Nafot, in the Palestinian Nafot. So they would, you know, we would just uh, incorporate that into a canton and, uh, and, and, and see how it works. And uh, if, they, if they want it, they can have it. Okay, so uh, I think it should, in, in agreement would obviously be better, but but uh, we can't we can't stick to the status quo just because the, the other side doesn't want to um, to move ahead. See what happens when, when that happens. Yeah, and, and you know that's what I really appreciate about this approach, Emmanuel. That often you know in activists they get caught up in idealism, and uh, it's very hard to make progress. If your if your goal is this idealist solution that has no viability, and I think that's what many activists try to push push for, and you're not saying this is what I think is the ideal situation. You're saying this is what I think can work, yeah, and I think that's... if if that's how we look at things, we're much more likely to make progress. So I, I very much appreciate that. Uh, I need to call out somebody in the comments. Akil is saying that uh, Israelis can go back to Europe where they came from. Okay. So just a few thoughts on that, uh, Akhil. Um, little history lesson. So around 50% of Jewish Israelis are Ashkenazi, so they do have a European background. If you go even further back, they come from the Levant, so this area of the world, um, which is confirmed by genetic testing. Um, but then the other 50% are actually M Middle Eastern Jews, right? So even you saying that just shows like an ignorance of the demographic makeup of the land and where the Jews come from. 
Uh, but even more so, it's just an entirely unhelpful and counterproductive statement to make. And, you know, we, we hear this on the other side as well. People say Palestinians should go back to Arabia. They're not they're not from the land. Arabs are from Arabia. All this does is fan the flames of hate. Um, so before writing in the comments section, I want you to ask yourself, what will this comment do? Will this bring us closer to one another or will this further separate us? And a comment like that just further separates us. So keep that in mind. And I, I, I like to add that whoever lives in Israel, in, in the land of Israel and in Palestine now is going to stay. OK, nobody's moving anywhere. Not the Palestinians and not the Israelis. And we have to live to, together and learn to live together. And I think the Federation is a good way of doing that. Yep, agreed. We're not going anywhere. Um, so someone, so Akhil is asking, you know, I said 50% European, 50% Middle Eastern. Akhil is asking, what about African Jews? So there are uh, Jews from Ethiopia. They make That's up a re relatively percent. small amount. So it's it's more or less. We could say 49% and 49% if that makes you feel better. Um, we, uh, Mazdak Zad is asking, could Emmanuel explain why Switzerland works, but Yugoslavia didn't? Well, first of all, Switzerland is a, um, a federation of, of, of coming together, uh, which means that the, the, there were separate units that uh, at, at some stage decided it's worth their while to come together. Yugoslavia was a, a communist dictatorship, and it, it's, it, it, it was sort of a federation of staying together. The idea was to, to set up a federation, but it was, it was done in a very, uh, not in a good way, disregarding ethnic divisions, okay? Like uh, under communism, there aren't supposed to be any, any of these divisions, and so they were ignored. And uh, on the long run, uh, it, it, it didn't work out. Uh, it didn't work out because there are a lot of things which are special to the in, in, into the Yugoslavian case. But we, we have to remember that uh, I, I, there was no really uh, completely, uh, what do you call it, uh, a leading ethnic group. There was it wasn't a leading ethnic group, but the, the second runner was pretty big too. So it wasn't like there was a very strong leadership of one group which could keep everything under control. Uh, and a lot of things contributed. Uh, I remember I was part of, a, of an intelligence, of the intelligence community, and we were discussing the uh, the likelihood of, of uh, Yugoslavia breaking up uh, in, the, in the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, uh, everybody agreed that this, it's not gonna happen. They're going to stay together. This is only the drunkards are talking. This isn't for, isn't for real, and it, it blew. Okay, so there's no guarantee, uh, even a federation, that things are going to work out. You have to have to make them work out, and that's that's a challenge. But I think it's a challenge that we can we can deal with, and it's the fact that that 30 federations in the world are doing a, a pretty good job. You don't hear. Uh, a federation of federations breaking up uh, every year or so. Or so, uh, actually, the uh, the last country to join as a federation, the, the, the federations is Nepal, which federalized. They went from a Hindu monarchy to a civil federation in a period of uh, of about eight years, and uh, they they did it all on their own. And they are running now, so it's 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 feasible, but it's doable, and it's something to look forward to. Awesome. Um, I think that just about wraps it up. Kalistos is asking. This is just a general question. If not for the conflict, would Jews view Palestinian Arabs as their own family? Um, it's an interesting question. I I personally think so. You know, according to um, the Torah, the Old Testament. Um, and this is also believed by Muslims that, you know, we're cousins. Um, we are the, the sons of Abraham, but, um, and, and even, even in Hebrew today, uh, Palestinians and Muslims are still referred to as B'nai Dodim, which is cousins. Yeah. 
even 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 though we don't like each other, we still call them our cousins, which is mm -hmm. interesting. So you would think that given peace that we would have this this familial vibe. Um, yeah. And Emmanuel, feel free to add to that if you feel differently. No, I think the I think a federation in, in, in the sense that it, 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 it's at the same time we're together in a, in, a, in a federal state and we're still separated in our canton cantons where we will have cultural and religious uh, autonomy to a very large degree. And that's it's exactly the, the balance that I think most of us will appreciate uh, not being mingled with everybody. Uh, but but still benefiting from living together under a, under under an umbrella of a federal state, uh, federal uh, some kind of you know, under some kind of unity, and I think uh, what is significant here is that if if we would form a federation, Israel would become part of the Middle East and would not would not uh, remain uh, an outpost of Europe is in in the Middle East. Okay. Because that, that I think that would be significant. I think there there would be significant significant support by the Arab countries uh, in the in the vicinity, the, the the Gulf countries. Uh, I think they would support the federation here very much because they're also un, not comfortable with the Palestine, independent Palestinian state, which the way they see it would cause only would cause trouble. So I think there's a lot, a lot to say for a federation. Uh, I, I, I think in reality it's the only option, uh, and I'm 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 looking forward to then when when the powers that be will also realize that. I'm doing my best for that to happen, to make that happen. Amazing, uh, my dingo pony. That's a cool name. Do you think Judaism is inherently anti-Islam? Is Islam inherently anti-Semitic? Well, Judaism, you know, was the, the the Torah was written thousands of years prior to Islam, so there's not there's no mention of Islam in the Torah. Um, and I'm not an expert on this topic, but from what I understand, the Quran has some verses that are are quite problematic in terms of their anti-Semitic nature. Uh, but I've also heard, um, you know, Muslims tell me that when they were raised, they said in order to be a good Muslim, first you need to be a good Jew, then a good Christian, then you could be a good Muslim. So I, I think it really all comes down to interpretation of, uh, of these religions. Uh, I think all holy texts have quite egregious, uh, you know, uh, concepts in them. For example, the Torah allows you to have slaves, but most Jews today don't support slavery, even if they're religious. So I think often culture transcends uh, religious belief. And just because something's written in the text doesn't mean it's inherent to that group of people. Um, another note, you know, uh, Jews living in the Middle East for, for thousands of years had significantly better conditions than Jews living in Europe. It wasn't perfect uh, by, by no means. There's many instances of, of uh, like anti-Semitic attacks and whatnot. But uh, th th there, there were, I think the numbers at, at the hundreds of thousands of Jews living in uh, quite well in the in the Middle East. Uh, the, the situation definitely deteriorated in the past few hundred years and e even more so after the creation of the state of Israel. But we, we've seen a relative harmony between uh, Muslims and Jews in the past. So regardless of the fact that there is scripture that is anti-Semitic, I don't think that is a reason why we can't live peacefully together. I agree. Yeah. Um, uh, Ellie Carton is asking what do you see as a pathway to enacting this to actually getting this done actually one of the things we shouldn't take notice is that we we are actually living in a in, in a sort of a federal system already okay if you look at the at the landscape uh, between the jordan river and the sea israel is in control of the area is basically the sovereign of the whole area the, the federal government you have areas which are under control of the IDF. There are areas under control of the Palestinian Authority. There are areas under control by Hamas. There are areas under control by the settlers. So you have you, you already have the, the basic framework uh, for a federal system. You have the municipal authorities, some from bigger, some from smaller. So there is, is, a, is and there's a, also a, a considerable realization that regionalization and the establishment of regional government has to happen. Okay, we've seen this in the in the in the recent crises, beginning with the COVID, uh, the COVID uh, crisis, 
that those elements in the in the in the in the country that could provide answers were the municipalities, the, the regional the regional authorities. Uh, so uh, and uh, and actually, the Ministry of the Interior in Israel has has prepared a plan to split Israel into twenty provinces. Okay, pretty much along the line with, that we we proposed, but they didn't include the West Bank in, in their proposal. And the present government of Israel is not working along those plans at all. It's it's doing exactly the opposite. It's, it's we're doing more centralization. But the realization that 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 uh, federalization or or regionalization is is the way to go is is quite clear and quite prominent. And uh, I think uh, the, what happened now in Gaza will help to crystallize the thought because Gaza will be a, a, an autonomous area whoever will be in charge of it and and also in certain areas in the in the West Bank will become autonomous so it will start it will start rolling okay uh, the idea the main thing will be have to, to get of course to get uh, political support we may have to form a political party a federal party uh, but uh, we have to see about that uh, so, so this, this is a work, work in progress, but it's going to speed up as we go. Awesome. Uh, Ellie Carton puts out a correction that when I describe the anti-Semitic texts, I'm describing, I'm thinking of the Hadith and not the Quran, the Hadith being an extension to the Quran, the same way the Talmud is an extension to the Torah, which by the way, the Talmud has a lot of problematic uh, texts in it um, as well. Um, often like anti-Semites when they when they're quoting like pr reasons why Jews can't be trusted, they're they're quoting uh, the, the Talmud, which is interesting, not the actual Torah. Um, let's um, one one thought that just came to mind. So Israel has an internal conflict that we have this growing rift between the ultra orthodox and, and secular uh, Jews. Mm -hmm. Do you view as a federation also solving that problem by giving more local autonomy to secular Jews and to Orthodox Jews? Uh, the, no, no, no. First of all, uh, ortho, uh, ultra Orthodox Jews live with the federation because the, the first of the concept of a civil state for them is quite a relief. One of the problems they have with Israel that Israel is a Jewish state. Okay, and if it's a Jewish state, it has to be a halachic state, and that's why they're working so hard to make it that. The moment the state, the, the state is not a Jewish state, but it's 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 a civil state, an Israeli state, so to speak. Okay, you can look at it as a Jewish state, but it's not declared as a Jewish state. Uh, they won't have they they they're going to be like they like in America. Okay, to in, in that regard, so they can, they can live with it. But there's no idea to have the cantons according to ide ideological uh, basis. Okay, uh, secular versus uh, I think what will happen, what will likely happen with the cantons which have a larger religious population will, you know, more religious people will move there over time or, or not, okay, depending on how the canton uh, operates and how it uh, runs, runs the show. Uh, so, but there's no, there's no consideration, at least not, not in, our, in our proposal, to have a secular Jewish canton and a ultra orthodox Jewish canton. That's not. That's not. Uh, that's not the way. I, I don't think we should go that way. Awesome. Um, cool. We're about to wrap it up. Uh, Emmanuel, any final thoughts? Where could people? I, I did put some links to your uh, website and and that. Yeah, should, yeah. Could, people can follow the Federation movement in English uh, on Facebook or. Uh, identity, the quest for Israel's future, also in English, and the same in uh, in Hebrew. Not a federatia, the root of Hippus Acharatitov Yitzel Israel, and my own uh, Facebook account, Emanuel Shachaf. Uh, I'd be happy to communicate and answer all questions awesome. uh, that come my way. And you can find some of these links in the description. Um... Cool, Emmanuel. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going to yeah, we are going to have another live stream tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow at three p.m., uh, Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, is making a speech. So we're going to live stream for that and maybe just watch it together. Uh, some people think it's a big announcement and an escalation to the war. So we'll be covering that. Uh, and then next week we're going to have some interesting conversations. We're going to have 
Zach Foster and Zach cornerback on. That's our the two Zachs, one Zionist, one anti-Zionist, both Jewish. So those are always fun. Uh, and then next week, I'm also going to do we did this years ago and people really enjoyed it. We're going to review different memes, a cringe meme review. And we'll also take that opportunity to review different Twitter accounts and debunk them. So if anybody has memes they want debunked or Twitter accounts they want reviewed, please send them to me. Uh, and with that, signing off, Emmanuel, thank you again so much. Those tuning in. Thank you. Thank you all, as always. Take care.